Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh my God. Let's try that again. Welcome to Random Randleness. Uh, today's episode is going to be cleaning and disassembling an iLife A6 vacuum robot. So, sort of an older model, not sure how many people still have these out there. Uh, they're a pretty, uh, you know, sort of a, I don't want to call them a Chinese knockoff. They're a, a Roomba made by a different company, essentially. I've had this particular robot for at least three years now, and it does a pretty good job of cleaning everything, but it does require some TLC. But if you give it the TLC it needs, uh, you will get some pretty decent life out of this thing. Uh, battery originally started with about three and a half hours of life, which is really good for one of these. Uh, I still get routinely two to almost three hours of uh, total battery life, so pretty nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take one apart and uh, show you how to clean it properly and fix the common bits that break or get stuck or jammed up and uh, get it back together and we'll go from there. So this is a uh, iLife A6. Uh, I believe is the model designation. So this one's got some years on it. You can see it's a little dinged up in places, but overall works pretty good. Only thing really necessary to get this thing apart and properly clean and maintain it is uh, you know, a little screwdriver kit. Uh, first thing to do before you get into any sort of disassembly, make sure you power it off. There's a physical power switch on the side of the robot. So we just switch that off and you can see the light on the front went off and now we can sort of safely work on it. The top is glass on these, it's actually tempered glass, so be very careful on the surface you're using. It's just my dining room table, should work fine. Uh, but start over by flipping it over, and this one just ran a couple days ago. I have not cleaned it out yet, so it is dirty and does need to be cleaned. A lot of it is just, you know, pulling the crap off that needs to be removed. We will pull and empty the tray and then I'll show you how to uh, pull and clean the filters. The filters are serviceable, you don't have to get new ones, you can sort of clean the ones that are there for a while, eventually they'll need to be uh, redone. So I'm going to go empty this, I'll be right back. What we're going to do with this is pop this top open and there's three different filters in here. There's your HEPA filter, there is a little screen, uh, or I'm sorry, a little foam that can actually be washed if you want to. And then this has two little spot here so you can grab and pull it out. This is the dust trap. It's actually a, just a physical screen. And all of these can be cleaned out. I wouldn't wash the HEPA filter in water. Again, this is the HEPA filter. I would just try to bang as much dust out of this as you can. And there you go. These are all significantly cleaner. You know, I probably need to get a new HEPA filter, but for right now, this will work. And there we go. So this guy goes in the bottom, particulate screen, and a little piece of foam, which I think acts more just as a separator between this and the HEPA filter. And the HEPA filter goes back into the top. Uh, make sure you orient it with a little tab on the top, makes it easier to take. So next. next step, we're going to pull these, pop all of your ends. They like to accumulate little random loose bits of hair and whatnot. Uh, get your screwdriver out at this point, Phillips head. So this is a relatively small one. We're going to pull these off and clean these. These like to get sort of dirt and hair and stuff up underneath of there. Pop the wheel so out. You literally just grab it and pull. Pop right out. Clean underneath. And there's usually Anything that twists or moves usually ends up with hair underneath it. So. And this wheel actually will get clogged up with hair to the point where it won't spin anymore. And this wheel also should spin pretty freely. And if it doesn't, this wheel actually just pops out from the other side. So you just come in, push on it, and pop it out. And the axle actually pulls out. And usually what you'll find, like in this case, is there's a bunch of junk up in that axle that's preventing that wheel from Good to spinning. clean that wheel from time to time. Literally just snaps back in place. 
see that. There is a wheel sensor right there that does sense spinning and movement. So that does have some uh, ability to detect whether it's working properly. Uh, these other, these are the sensors. These are drop sensors. There's a third one up here. Uh, those are so that the device doesn't go off um, a stair or over a ledge. I am going to show you how to pull the wheels off. I think that's something that uh, probably people end up throwing these away prematurely because the wheels get all gummed up and the gears inside get all gummed up and then they, the, one of the wheels will stop working and they'll just throw it away. Uh, don't need to do that. These are absolutely serviceable by your average person. I'm also going to take the front guard, this lower edge of the front guard off, this part here, uh, which is just a matter of removing six screws. You get your screwdriver in there and just pull these screws out. And then this front, just grab it, it just pops up. This is supposed to be able to move. There is a sensor in there, and if for some reason it doesn't, uh, then you know, pulling this apart and cleaning it. Uh, these are the springs here. There is a clip that can be uh, detached, and this whole piece can come off here if you want to clean up inside. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that in this case, just so you can see it. These are your sensors. So these should move freely. Uh, these are the motors that turn the little brushes. So there's a gear reduction in there, motor, brush. And then the wheels, to be able to get to and remove the wheels. So there's three screws holding the wheels in. So I pulled those three screws out there. And this flap comes up. And the whole wheel assembly sort of comes with it. There is a connector that connects the motor power to the uh, to the rest of the vacuum and you pull that connector very gently sort of rock it back and forth a little bit and out it pops it's also sprung you can see the spring up underneath there right there the spring just turns pivots to one side and then you unhook it. This pivot here, no need to pull that off. That's not gonna get in the way of anything you're doing. If you find that this wheel is not moving for some reason, what you wanna do is actually remove these six screws here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this whole plate, this whole face will come off and expose all the gear mechanism underneath. When these wheels get stuck, pulling this cover off is really the only thing I've ever had to do. So I'll show you that real quick. Of course that was going to happen, why wouldn't it? show you the way these go back together, because I have had them pop off like this before. And there you go. So, what I found with these is through the wheel you'll actually get gunk up. There is a seal, so under this gear where the, the shaft of the wheel connects there, there is a seal there. Um, and you'll get gunk that gets through that. Just a little bit of fine dirt will get through that and it'll get up in here and impinge these gears. Usually just taking this apart and uh, cleaning it out a little bit and re-greasing it is enough to make it work again. So it's not that big a deal. So, and there we go. So, you can see the motor inside, up in there. Turns properly. So she's good to go. Didn't get any dirt in it or anything. We'll get these screws back in. Putting this back in, first thing to do, spring. So the spring goes around and just clips on. Reconnect the motor. Only goes one way, so just make sure it's on there solidly. Don't pinch the wires. And down she goes. And there you go. There's the 
battery. Huh, I'm gonna give you a little hoist to pull it out. Oh, there is a connector. There you go. Wow, that is dirty in there. So, there you go. So I guess you could uh, potentially get another one of these. So that's how you would change the battery out if you needed to. Not a lot to that, but figured it was showing. So these two screws here, you can pull out. Yep, that's all that is. It just pulls straight out so you can get in there and clean it out. So. Oh, hey. Huh. That was actually worthwhile. Look at that. Yep. You can see there's a key. Same thing on this. It's a little tab on it, so it only really fits one way. So, kind of hard to screw it up. I am not a fan and never have been a fan of the disposable society. I do not like buying things only to realize they have a limited shelf life. And you got to go buy another one in, you know, three years or something. You know, I, I like... I get a kick out of uh, objects that continue to operate for the purpose for which they were intended for a um, exceedingly long time. So antiques that are still being used for their initial purpose really I get a kick out of that kind of stuff. So I intend to keep this guy running for as long as I possibly can. And, uh, back to that front housing, the reason this does have a, a hookup here, there are some sensors behind here. Um, and those sensors are infrared, I believe, and so every now and, th and then you'll see this thing go up like it's going to hit a wall, and then it doesn't. And I think that's what those are. There are infrared sensors in there that uh, can sense heat, uh, type of thing not hit my foot. And it'll come up close to my foot if I'm just wearing a sock or something, and then it'll stop, and it'll turn around. And I think those are, uh, that's what those sensors are, so that is most likely to provide that. I just kind of assumed that would pull right out, but... sensor right there. So I think these are all lights. Those are infrared sensors so that it can sort of see where it's going. There we go. We'll put our two screws back. Screwdrivers and magnet might as well make use of it. back up here there's that and this actually sits up in a groove like that so that's why it's easiest to do this when it's upside down so you get that in that groove and then we get the top back up This guy back in. I'll put these two on. You can put this back in. Put this back on. And put this back in. There you go. And your vacuum robot has now been fully cleaned, disassembled, put back together and should continue functioning, functioning wonderfully for the uh, life of your ownership of it. Good boy, Ringo. Let's go clean some dirt.
Well, an awful lot of pet hair. I have not had the uh, the amazing, uh, you know, running over a giant dog turd that, uh, you know. So, I don't know if you can see this very well, but the spring goes around. Vacuum robot. This is a uh, Icon A6. Hmm. Almost helps to have another vacuum to be able to clean your vacuum. Maybe I broke it. Maybe it's Maybelline. When you clean a vacuum cleaner, you become a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? She don't. Huh.